have a big mouth eagle to shout. Attention, please! You can sit down. Hi, I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, let me just try to uh, quickly go through uh, what the process was in terms of the Harford Charter Revision Commission of 2012-2013. Uh, as you uh, can recall, in 2002, we had a charter revision, and I think that's when we went from a, a weak mayor form of government to a strong mayor form of government. And so uh, the voters came out, and uh, we changed uh, quite a bit of the charter, I think, in 20, uh, 2002. There was another charter revision, I believe, in 2009, uh, that uh, met and came up with some conclusions, but because of some technicalities in terms of the timing, that uh, those recommendations were never voted on. And so in uh, 2002, I believe, uh, you have to do a charter revision within 10 years. So in 2012, a, a, a charter revision was commissioned uh, of which we had 11 members, and uh, I was elected chair of that commission. We were uh, uh, put together in, I think, March of 2012, with the idea that we would uh, finish our work by August 1st of that year. Uh, we were not able to do that even though we had uh, 18 months to complete it. We did complete our work in March of 2013 and we made some recommendations and because of the timing, we made some recommendations to uh, City Council in June and they agreed to put uh, the recommendations that we made to, the, uh, to vote uh, in this election uh, to the Hartford residents. And so uh, we met, if you see on the, uh, uh, the, the ballot, there's three questions uh, about the charter revision. And so they took our recommendations, city council took our recommendations and broke it into really three parts, which were uh, they separated our issues about public financing of local elected officials and they separated that from the recommendations as a separate question. They separated uh, some recommendations about the rest of voters, and they took those recommendations and separated it from the, uh, up the, the general recommendations. And so, and then they had the third part, which is all the other recommendations besides the one on the rest of voters and besides the one on the campaign financing. And so that's why you have three questions. Uh, uh, so we have one rec we have one uh, we made a, a, a number of recommendations and based on the recommendations they took that and they separated it into three questions and uh, I believe that you can vote separately on the three questions so that you can affect possibly uh, for example uh, the recommendations that we made outside of those two recommendations of public finance and rest of voters can actually pass, and those other two recommendations <clears throat> say may not pass. So again, uh, you're not voting on one piece in terms of, uh, of all the recommendations that we, that we made. Uh, I took a quick review of the, uh, uh, the uh, Harford voter uh, organization and the uh, breakdown in terms of uh, the questions uh, based on the recommendations, and I think that they, they did a very good job of really explaining some of the major recommendations that we're making uh, on the uh, uh, charter revision. So uh, I think this is, is a very good handout. And, I, and I, I have to tell you that since the questions for the ballot has been made public, I have uh, gotten a few calls uh, based on the wording of the question for the ballot which I think uh, are confusing people already. So um, hopefully they'll, they'll uh, get clear on that. But I don't really want to go through all of the recommendations, but I do want to say that uh, the register of voters, we are not recommending that we don't have register of voters. Uh, that was one of the, I think, some of the questions I've been getting calls on. Uh, we're recommending that the register of voters, and there was some debate in the, in the uh, commission about how a register of voters should be appointed. But basically what we're suggesting is that Harford uh, doesn't necessarily need three or four or five registered voters, depending on state law, where uh, uh, state law requires, I think, a majority party of the town to have a registered voters and a minority party. Uh, and I think uh, since we have three, it's because the working families member uh, got more votes than a Republican uh, member, 
And so since the Democrats and Republicans, in a sense, were guaranteed the spot, we ended up with three registered voters. Uh, we uh, discussed that quite a bit uh, as the commissioners, and we felt that the registered voters should be a uh, more professionalized position that uh, I, I can't say nonpartisan because the person may be a registered uh, member of a party, but we would like uh, to suggest that the office become professionalized to increase voter turnout, uh, voter access, regardless of the registration of the person, and that that person has a professional staff that uh, is responsible for uh, uh, vote education, uh, election day responsibilities, and protection of all voters in Hartford so that they can have some uh, assistance that is responsible to make sure that the majority party interest is, is, is held and also the minority parties, no matter how many of those minority parties, that their uh, interests are also being uh, uh, held uh, and looked at and, and protected. So we thought that uh, the rest of voters should be a professional office. Uh, we had a lot of discussion on how that person should be uh, selected. Uh, the recommendation is that the council select it, uh, but we suggested to the council that they can create that position as a professional position through the personnel department. That would be up to council. So we actually gave council some latitude as to how they want to appoint the person. So even though the charter is recommended that the council is responsible for the appointment, of the register of voters, uh, they can say, no, the, the, the way we want the register of, voter, uh, register of voters, the head register of voters, they can suggest that it be a personnel, a professional position out of personnel and just uh, um, create the outline in terms of uh, what they will want in those job specifications. So there is some latitude. The idea is that if you have one professional register of voters that was responsible for the office and then they would hire the people that they need to carry out the functions of that. So that, that's the register of voters piece. The uh, public finances of uh, local elections, again, uh, with the register of voters as well with the campaign finance, we will have to look at some changes in some of the state laws to be able to, to, to do that. The state allows for uh, towns uh, to create a demonstration project for some local, uh, uh, some public finances of local uh, local elected officials. Uh, there was not a lot of towns that was knocking down the state door to say, let, let me be part of this demonstration project. I believe New Haven was one that I think is trying it. So uh, this, the city can currently go to the state and ask to be a part of this demonstration part project of funding uh, local candidates through a public financing structure. And so we're recommending that the city seek out that information to find out uh, it would, would it be in the city's best interest to have it. And if that was to pass, uh, that would direct the city council to go and ask for the process to have a public financing of local, uh, local candidates. Uh, so those are the two separate questions. And again, uh, the information that you have outlines some of the other stuff that we recommended that has to do with the mayor's salary, uh, the uh, council president, the mayor's salary with, and the treasurer's salary that we're tying it into the salaries of the uh, appellate court judge and superior court judge so that uh, you may recall that there was some debate on the salary of the treasurers a, a few years ago. We would like to take the debate out of the uh, uh, politics for the salaries of the, of the mayor and the treasurer and so they just tied into the uh, uh, salaries of the appellate court, court judge and superior court judge, and that way it's, it's no longer based on uh, the city council voting on their salaries, which they don't do on the mayor, but they do on the treasurer. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, also are recommending that the mayor uh, can still appoint, again, a considerable debate, that the mayor can still appoint uh, the five members for the Board of Education, but the mayor uh, could sit on the board as a non-voting member, that's officio. So the mayor gets to appoint the five, but the mayor uh, cannot appoint himself and sit on the board as a, as a voting member. So he can sit on the board as an S officio with non-voting powers. So that's the recommendations uh, that we have. And as uh, Ms. Simmons uh, just uh, stated, we have a board of education coming up, uh, election coming up next week. We have four 
uh, public uh, seats available for election. We only have four candidates that's running, so it's almost, uh, you know, again, uh, when we changed the charter to have five members elected by the board, uh, you know, again, I got a lot of questions about people wanting to have some participation and voting on board members. And as you can see, you only got four members running for four spots. It's not much of a debate for the residents of the city of Hartford and the parents of the city of Hartford as to what candidate might be best served. So uh, I'm not so sure. We, you know, we, we thought in 2002 that this was the way to go. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, when we change the charter, we want to try to increase participation, not uh, from the residents, not decrease it. And I got to tell you that I'm saddened by only four people from the city of Hartford wanting to run for Board of Education for four spots. It doesn't leave a lot of discussions as to uh, who our uh, education leaders may be for the interests of our, of our residents. Uh, but this is what we, in a sense, created. So we have to be very careful, I think, sometimes uh, when we do these things. Uh, I really am not going to go over the rest of the recommendations. They're really, they're, they're, they're spelled out very well in that, that uh, uh, handout that you have. If you have a minute to, to browse it, uh, I think we would rather have some discussion about those kind of recommendations. And I think the panel wants to uh, weigh in on their views on it uh, at this point. Uh -huh.